I'm Dr. Chip Levee, Professor of Medicine and the Medical Director of Cardiac Rehabilitation and Preventive Cardiology and Director of the Exercise Laboratories at the John Oshner Heart and Vascular Institute, Oshner Clinical School, the University of Queensland School of Medicine here in New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm here today to discuss our paper entitled, The Protective Role of Resting Heart Rate on All-Cause and Cardiovascular Mortality which will be published in the December 2013 issue of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. I'd first like to thank, acknowledge, and congratulate my co-authors, especially the first author, Arpit Saxena, and my other co-authors, especially the lead author, Dr. Shramay Shway, and the other co-authors, Dr. D.C. Lee, and especially Dr. Stephen Blair, the senior author on this study, as well as my other co-authors, for their excellent work on this important manuscript. Clearly, numerous studies in the literature have demonstrated the protective role of low resting heart rate, which is generally associated with cardiovascular health. Low resting heart rate is a marker of good autonomic tone, higher parasympathetic tone, and lower sympathetic stimulation, and a better prognosis. And on the other hand, higher resting heart rates, and especially tachycardia, are associated with more cardiovascular diseases and a worse cardiovascular prognosis. In addition, there's certainly substantial evidence showing the importance of cardiorespiratory fitness for cardiovascular diseases. And my co-authors and I, Dr. Stephen Blair, myself, and other co-authors have published numerous manuscripts in various subgroups of patients showing the importance of cardiorespiratory fitness including several papers published in the Mayo Clinic proceedings. In fact, Dr. Blair has demonstrated that fit individuals with a number of chronic diseases, this is true for hypertension, obesity, metabolic syndrome, and diabetes, they usually have a better prognosis than do unfit individuals without these same chronic diseases. And in fact, higher cardiorespiratory fitness is perhaps one of the most important and protective cardiovascular risk factors. But very few studies in the literature have combined the important roles of resting heart rate and cardiorespiratory fitness as we did in the current manuscript in both hypertensives and non-hypertensives. So in the present study, we assessed the impact of resting heart rate on all-cause and cardiovascular mortality in fit and unfit individuals with and without self-reported systemic hypertension. We used the Aerobic Center Longitudinal Study where the, the senior author, Dr. Steve Blair, worked for many years at the Cooper Institute. And we studied 52,000 individuals who were followed for an average of 15 years. And during this time, there were 3,125 deaths. So our study is quite powered statistically to assess both all-cause and cardiovascular mortality. In our study, we found that the fit individuals, or at least those who didn't fall, fall in the bottom 20 percentile for fitness based on age and gender, and if they had a low resting heart rate, less than 60 beats per minute, they had the best cardiovascular prognosis and the lowest all-cause mortality. On the other hand, the unfit who fell in the bottom 20 percentile of fitness based on age and gender, and if they had a resting heart rate, over 80 beats per minute, they had a poor prognosis with a higher all-cause and cardiovascular mortality. In general, we showed a very strong linear relationship across resting heart rates with both all-cause and cardiovascular mortality. Now, we also assessed those who had self-reported hypertension and those who did not have hypertension. And generally, the same linear trend was present uh, for increasing heart rate with increasing both all-cause and cardiovascular mortality in both the hypertensive and the non-hypertensive groups, although our results were only statistically significant for all-cause mortality in the non-hypertensives and for cardiovascular mortality in the hypertensive subgroup. We demonstrated that those individuals in the whole cohort who had low cardiorespiratory fitness falling in the bottom 20 percentile for uh, fitness for age and gender, 
and with a resting heart rate greater than 80 beats per minute, they had a 2.2-fold higher risk of mortality and a 2.7-fold higher risk of cardiovascular mortality. On the other hand, the unfit who had resting heart rates under 80 only had a 1.5-fold increased mortality risk, which was basically the same mortality risk as the fit who had a, heart, a resting heart rate greater than 80 beats per minute. We believe that our study adds considerably to the current literature combining the effects of low resting heart rate and cardiorespiratory fitness on both all-cause and cardiovascular mortality in both hypertensives and non-hypertensives. And importantly, we showed the protective role of low resting heart rate irrespective of the level of cardiorespiratory fitness. Now, our study has several strengths. The first strength is obviously the very large number of, of in the cohort of over 50,000 individuals with a long follow-up averaging over 15 years. So that gives a lot of statistical power. On the other hand, our main limitation is the cohort itself. The aerobic center longitudinal study is fairly unique. It's mostly Caucasian, higher socioeconomic, uh, more well-educated. So this group may not be applicable or may not represent all populations across the United States and even particularly across uh, the Western world. It was also very important that we studied hypertensives and non-hypertensives because during the era of our study, hypertension was typically treated with beta blockers, which of course will reduce resting heart rate. So it was important that we showed the protective impact of low resting heart rate in both hypertensives and non-hypertensives. Unfortunately, our data did not include medications, so we do not know which patients were on beta blockers and which ones were not, uh, although presumably uh, this would be a very small uh, number, and especially uh, there should be pr practically no one in the non-hypertensive uh, group. So in conclusion, our study showed the protective role of low resting heart rate against both all-cause and cardiovascular mortality in hypertensives and non-hypertensives, and we showed these results irrespective of the level of cardiorespiratory fitness. The best prognosis were those who were fit, meaning not falling in the bottom 20 percentile for fitness based on age and gender, and that they had a low resting heart rate. The take-home measures is the best way to lower one's resting heart rate, and at the same time, increase the level of cardiorespiratory fitness is to increase the overall level of physical activity and to do some regular exercise training. And efforts in this direction are strongly needed in both the primary and secondary prevention of cardiovascular diseases. Thank you very much. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.com. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.